Ecosystem-based management synthesis uh, will be presented uh, today by Anne-Marie Swartz, a contractor, a strand leader of EBM. Anne-Marie has a marine and freshwater biology background and has worked as a scientist for NIWA and a scientist and program manager for World Fish in Solomon Islands. Anne-Marie is drawing on her experience uh, within international aquatic systems research programs and community-based fisheries management and contributing to the synthesis activities. No, my Heidi, my Emory. Tena koto katoa, uh, no Urapi o Kutipuna, no Tauranga Aho, uh, ko Anne Marie Swartz, Pukuingoa. There's a list of people. Um, that are put up there, there's an increasing number of us involved in the EBM synthesis strand. And I'd like to acknowledge those that are listed here but who, and those who are co contributing now, but that list is going to grow. So there's a few dots on the end. You'll have seen this poster by now in the tea room down below us. And this is really the structure that I'm going to follow in this short presentation. Transitioning to EBM includes having access to effective tools, processes, institutional and regulatory arrangements that are tailored specifically to Aotearoa. So activities in this EBM synthesis strand are drawing on the knowledge that the challenge is generated based on science and mātauranga Māori and on guidance, tools and frameworks that have been developed. The activities in this strand will create outputs that will, to quote um, what is becoming quite well, well, a quite well-used term in the synthesis, create something that is greater than the sum of the parts. So there are three activities, three main activities in the strand. The influencing policy and legislation activity, a scenario testing activity, and an EBM roadmap. And the EBM roadmap aims to deliver a toolbox for EBM that incorporates the blue economy and Tao Māori, the principles of blue economy and Tao Māori for management of at multiple scales. So I'll move on to the influencing policy and legislation activity. This is led, led by Pierre Tellier and uses challenge research to positively influence marine management and governance. This is a whole of challenge approach and it's drawing on expertise and research results from across all of the projects. Draws on them in a targeted way to address some specific opportunities and to date there've been two main ways of doing that. Firstly, that's through submissions from the challenge and you can see the list there of the submissions that have been made and Liz referred to those this morning as well. Secondly, through developing targeted resources for a particular issue of current interest. The reframing environmental limits for estuaries document was written to support discussions on limit setting for estuaries, which we again heard about uh, earlier today, have, current, have not been subject to the approach that's currently being applied to freshwater bodies through the National Policy Statement for Freshwater Management. The next two activities are a little bit different. Both are focused on guidelines, frameworks, tools, and that also includes uh, models and methods. Um, we're shortening that to G GFT, to GIFs. So these are the GIFs from the challenge. That's what I'll refer to them from here on in. And uh, working across all themes. The two activities are closely linked and I'm actually going to start off with where we want to end up with the EBM roadmap. And this is a piece of work that Judy Hewitt is leading. So the gifts from the challenge have been catalogued. Some are already up on the website in this document shown here. Others, as you will have guessed from the last few days, are emerging, are being developed. Uh, so those are gradually being added to the catalogue. Drawing from the catalogue, the intent is to create roadmaps that can lead users to specific GIFs and or bundles of GIFs that support and complement each other. This is merely a schematic for illustration of 
a possible walkthrough decision-making process that is anticipated to guide users toward either an individual gift that can address a specific topic or to groups of gifts that can help users get to a particular type of desired outcome. For example, guidance on participation and recognizing different types of knowledge paired with a biophysical model. And I think we had a great example of that this morning from Sean and Fabrice's presentation. Or it may be leading towards possible gifts that can help with determining the approach to tackling an issue at hand when users aren't committed to how this should be achieved. But to get to this stage, uh, something that's become very clear to me over the last few days, and we do recognize that there's more to do for many of these gifts to be ready to use, as it were. And this is in part where the scenario testing activity comes in. Scenario testing activity aims to take some of the GIFs that have been developed as outputs of collaborative research and test them with stakeholders so that they can be more accessible and applicable for a wider range of users. This won't be possible for all of the outputs, so the approach is, over the next year or so, is to work with identified groups of users, probably less than a year now, who are addressing an issue at hand and have the time and the capacity to engage within the time frame we have available. So one example, we have partnered with the Nature Conservancy and Kotahi Tangamotataio in Tato Iho, where re researchers from the EBM, Tao Māori, and the Blue Economy Strands will join in workshops facilitated, facilitated by TNC in the coming months to identify which gifts are likely to be able to support EBM in planning management and restoration activities. And these are designed to implement the Ko Tahitanga Motataio strategy. And we heard on Wednesday that this is also a case for the Blue Economy Synthesis Strand. We're also partnering with Fisheries New Zealand and Department of Conservation to build on risk assessment tools to use GIFs to explore possible trade-offs between ecological, social, and technological risk of different fishing methods. So an opportunity for testing different scenarios there. Other members of our EBM synthesis team, Justine and Leslie, who are here today, are consulting with regional council staff to identify some key needs that GIFs could help address but that do need more work to be accessible and user-friendly. So we anticipate that there will be uh, workshops and activities around those that can be accommodated within this uh, scenario activity. In each of these, the purpose will be to assess the utility of the gifts in supporting EBM and to identify any gaps or improvements. There'll be some opportunity to develop the gifts further within the time frame that we have available uh, but also to recommend next steps for development. All of the learnings coming out of this activity, the scenario testing, will feed back in to help inform the development of the EBM roadmap. Finally, and you've just seen this um, picture from Chris, uh, EBM, the EBM strand is not working in isolation. The, strands, the strand leaders and activity leaders have identified touch points with each other. Uh, the strands are moving at different paces, uh, but we're checking in regularly and identifying opportunities where we can find synergies and leverage off uh, the various activities that are going on in the different strands. We aim to be adaptive, and we welcome further discussion and your ideas as we strive to create a legacy of usable and accessible knowledge and gifts from the challenge. Kia ora. <laughs>